If you're familiar with Google Sites, you will love these four advanced features that will help you scale Google Sites for your classroom or school district. The first advanced feature of Google Sites I'd like to talk about is the ability to add a custom theme. Now, for the longest time, Google Sites has only offered five themes, Aristotle, Diplomat, Vision, and within those themes, there were minimal ability to customize. Well, that is no longer the case. You can customize everything. Um, it can actually be a little overwhelming. There's so many different options, every button, font, banner, border. You can customize all of it. Just head over to the Themes tab in your Google site. You should see this new um, Create Custom Theme option. Give it a name, and you can begin customizing every single element of your theme right here. Now, if you would like some inspiration, I really like this one website. This is Coolers. It's a free color scheme generator. Head over to Coolers, launch the generator, and you just press the space bar and it generates a new color palette uh, every time. If you like one, just copy the color values from this website, drop them into Google Sites, and you'll have a beautiful template uh, that you can use. Now, currently, you cannot share a theme with another person, but stick around because I'm going to show you how you can work around that limitation in just a minute. The second advanced Google site trick I want to show you is how to force someone else to make a copy of your site template. This is very useful in a variety of ways. First, if you've just created a custom template and you want to apply that template to other websites, you have to make a copy of the original. Now, if you're a Google Drive user, you'll immediately recognize this. We're going to modify the URL of our Google site, which is going to force the person accessing that URL to make a copy of the original. We don't have to share it with them. They won't have editing access. It works really well. Let's take a closer look at our site URL. So it starts with sites.google.com and then it has a long list of random characters, the letter P, and then another long list of characters. So this is a little bit different than the Google Drive trick that you might uh, have used before. We need to delete or remove everything up to the letter P. Okay, so you should see the letter P in there. That stands for page. You have like the site ID and then the page ID. We're going to delete all of that. We're going to delete the letter P, and then we're going to replace it with template slash preview. Okay, and that you may have done before with Google Docs. Important to note that you cannot at this time use the slash copy command. That will not work. You have to do slash template slash preview. I'm going to press enter, and that will generate this screen here. You can share this URL with another uh, teacher, another student, and they will be able to make a copy of your template with the, uh, the theme uh, intact and whatever other information that you've added. Because Google Sites is part of Google Drive, it works with Google Classroom. The third advanced tip I'd like to show you is how Google Sites and Classroom can work together. I've got three different assignment scenarios I'd like to run through with you. First is a whole class activity. So I've designed a study guide in Google Sites. Um, and students are going to be assigned a particular objective or person for our World War II study guide and fill in that page with the information they find. So as a class, all 25, 35 kids are going to work together on this and be assigned to a page. This is the easiest type of assignment to assign through classroom. It's pretty straightforward. You're going to write up your assignment, your details, and then you're simply going to attach your website using the Google Drive link, browse to your site, and then we're going to make sure that we use the students can edit option. That will give students editing rights. Now they can edit any page on the site, so it's important that you assign every student to a particular area of the site that they're responsible for adding content to. Now you can modify this if you want into a small group activity. Let's pretend that instead of the entire class working together, I want to divide my class into five groups. All I'm going to do is reuse this post and I'm going to assign this activity to a group of five students. So I'll reuse it. I'm going to go over here to my student selector, select the five students, three students who are going to work in this group. Typically, I'll put a little note in the assignment title, something like, uh, you know, this is uh, group one. And then I'm going to give them editing access to that file. So those three students and myself will have the ability to um, edit this. I'm going to do that again, reuse the post, same one that we just did. 
But this time, I'm going to make sure that this box is selected where it says create new copy of the attachment. That will create a second copy of my Google site. I'll select the next three students, rename that as group two, and then just continue repeating that process until I have enough project groups um, based on my class size. So we've looked at two different ways to assign Google Sites to your students, a whole class and a small group. What about individual assignments? If you want a student to create their own Google Site. Unfortunately, at this time, Google Sites doesn't support the make a copy for every student option that you get with Google Docs and Slides, but we can use my second tip, the force a copy inside Google Classroom to work around that limitation. So here is my um, portfolio template. Every student's gonna create a portfolio, they need their own. So I've gone ahead and modified the URL, template slash preview. I'm gonna copy that URL come to my Google Classroom assignment, use the link button to copy and paste that modified link and drop that into Google Classroom. When students click on that link, it will prompt them to make a copy of the site. Now, the one limitation to this is that they will have their own Google site, but it will not be linked back to Google Classroom. So you'll need to instruct your students on how to take their site, copy the link to it, and then attach it to the assignment so that you will continue to have access to it as they're adding to their portfolio. Google Sites offers a template gallery. Now, Docs, Slides, Sheets, Forms all offer this same feature, and it's a great way to quickly create a Google Site. This is what the template gallery looks like, and Google provides a half dozen or so templates that you can utilize. But the really interesting thing is that your school district can publish custom templates for internal use. This is a great feature if you want to create department websites or a consistent student portfolio that is used across the school district. It's a pretty easy, uh, straightforward process. First, I'm gonna go ahead and build out a Google site. So I'm building a department intranet site and I've created the site with all the pages and sections that each department will need to fill in. Once that site is finished, someone will visit sites.google.com. We're going to visit the template gallery. And this is where you will find your district or your organization private template gallery. Submitting a template is super easy. Just look for this submit template button. If you don't see it, check with your IT administrator. You may need to be granted permission to upload templates to the gallery. That's not available by default. Once that template has been submitted, it'll be approved, and then anyone in the district will be able to visit the private template gallery, make a copy of the site, and then fill it with their own information. If you've enjoyed this look at advanced Google Site tips, I'd encourage you to check out my Google Site Inspiration Gallery. This is some of the best Google Sites that I've seen that will inspire you to use these four advanced tips in new and creative ways.